Casey, thank you for sitting down with me for coffee. We're across the street from Navigo's worldwide headquarters here at 20 Fathoms. Tell us about 20 Fathoms. So 20 Fathoms is a brand new tech entrepreneurial incubator that uh, we brought to fruition about a month ago. And it's extremely exciting. It's right in beautiful downtown Traverse City, Michigan. It's the home to the startup culture and entrepreneurial culture. This is Casey Cowell, industry legend, founder of US Robotics, <laughs> and best known for really changing the entire personal computing world by introducing the modem. So what drove you to create the computer modem? Uh, what drove us was uh, to uh, survival as usual. You know, we, we uh, uh, wanted to do, start, do a startup and uh, this was in the mid-70s, 1976. And we wanted to build, it was the early days of time sharing where many people for the first time could use one computer simultaneously, mainly championed by Digital, Digital Equipment Corporation. And uh, so that meant that people needed computer terminals to access remote computers. And so we set out to build a uh, keyboard with a built-in acoustic coupler, rubber cup deal, you put a telephone handset in. And uh, it ran at 30 characters per second. And it would connect to uh, with alligator clips to your, the rabbit ears antenna on your TV and you turn to channel four and you'd get a uh, 24 line by 64 column computer terminal. And so it was cheap and it never worked, but we figured out how to build the modem, so we went off to build modems. And the time sharing industry really started to flourish throughout the uh, late 70s and through the 80s. And uh, we got really good at building modems that would go faster and faster and faster. And uh, if you can imagine this, a key step forward was when we were able in 1982 to build a 1200 bit per second or 120 character per second modem. So it would stream data off the telephone lines at 120 characters per second, not 120 million characters per second. And that was significant because for the first time data appeared on your screen faster than you could read. And uh, everybody just thought, holy mackerel, what's going to happen next? <laughs> yeah, so, right. So we were driven to, um, you know, the market was taking off. We were, although no one had a degree in electronics, so I'll see the pants learning, we were really good at math and uh, knew a lot about computers. And so off we went to build faster and faster data communications products. And the reason why was that there was a demand for it. For the first time, anybody anywhere could access a, a remote computer. It used to be you had to be in the building where the computer was. And for the first time, the world started in baby steps to open up. And we saw that as a huge opportunity. So we went at it 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was a blast, so. Well, and I see you really as being um, a leader in recognizing disruptive technology. And I think about how far technology, especially in the computing space, has come since then. Let's fast forward till today, and what led you to invest in Navigo? Well, the, the, the disruptive technologies today is, are the endless ways in which data is captured and collected. It's massive. It's from machines, the Internet of Things. We're, invested, we're investors in a uh, satellite communications company unbelievable massive amounts of data downloaded 24 hours a day, terabytes, looking at every square inch of Earth 24 hours a day. And of course, in every aspect of human interaction between whenever two people connect, data is created. And, uh, and it's just gigantic in scale. But the issue is that you can't really just use the data. You've got to use clean data. And while people are doing, you know, unbelievable pyrotechnics to collect ever more data in ever more ways, There's when you go to look at what you've got, you bog down. And Navigo was a clear example of a small local company in Traverse City that was highly focused, rifle shot focused, on how to easily and effectively and efficiently bore in to what's important here and allow you as an organization to maintain and clean your data and see what you've got. And comparing Navigo as a smaller startup company to US Robotics back when it was in its startup days, how do the two companies compare? Yeah, well, the, um, for a long time at Robotics, the, uh, the 6 a.m. strategy was to still be in business at noon. So Navigo <laughs> is fortunately is, is way past that. The, um, the th things that are similar, what's great about Navigo is it's a, it's a small company, but it's a small, talented, highly focused company. So they're really 
have a clear vision of what it is they're about, which is to provide access to data. And not, you know, that doesn't mean um, first figure out how to build a big project within, say, the IT department to go in and inv investigate all the wrappers and, and overhead infrastructure that's in place in order to move your data around and control it. It's bypass all that stuff and look at the data. And that's what hasn't been happening. And it's a major project to try to look at your data and clean it up. And Navigo says the real issue here is let's look at the data, clean up our data and see what we've got. And what's really cool is now the next steps are to add more tools and, and access more third-party tools so that once we see the data and, and get rid of all the wrappers, once we see the data, we can quickly start to compare it to known good data and quickly start to estimate how accurate and valid the data is. And that's, that's really valuable. And as key executives learn about Navigo and learn how Navigo can help them in business, what, what are you hearing? Good stuff. The executives, you know, the thing, of, the, what executives like is that for the first time they have some confidence that they can begin to understand the, their data and how good their data is. And they, they can push um, analysis and understanding of the data and cleaning of the data broadly through the organization so that they can get a lot of constant kind of organic uh, working with the data to keep it clean and keep it honest and know what they've got. The, the problem in the past was that it was sort of like the early days of the computer industry. If you wanted to do something, you, had, you went down to the, the internal computation department and you laid out what you wanted and it was all engineers and they figured out, you know, in their mindset and their view of the world, what it was you wanted and then they came up with a project and maybe a year later something came out of it, but you were really, uh, you were never, as the executive or the manager, you were never really integrated into that process very well. You know, you threw things over the wall and they came up with a solution and tossed it back at you. But now, you know, we can, we, we don't have to go with Navigo tools, you don't have to go through so many machinations to look at your data and get a much broader segment of your company looking at the data and maintaining it. And that is extraordinarily valuable. In this era of huge analytics, it's amazing how costly it is, how time consuming it is to come up with bad answers. And if you have clean data, you can get right answers right away. So for those listening to us today, what are the top couple things that they should take away about Navigo? Number one thing is, is to cut through all the wrappers, all the things, the roadblocks that seemingly, that, that structure your database but they get in the way of looking at your database. And it's really an issue when you start to put more than one database together, you start to examine across databases. For example, I've been involved in a number of healthcare organizations and in the last few years, you've seen a lot of consolidation. And it's not just hospital systems, and we've seen a bunch of those come together from small to large. And integrating those databases is, is fraught with difficulty to say the least. But it's also small doctor organizations and patient care organizations. And as you know, in the world of healthcare, every time you go in as a patient, you know, you get referred to one department after another, one office after another, and you enter the same information, you think, you know, maybe 17 different times. And it's, it's a non-trivial matter to clean that up when you're talking about millions of records or more spread over a plethora of organizations. So the thing that Navigo can do is drill down to the data and not all the stuff that manages the data. And that's what the real value of our products are. And it's really beautiful to see something that gets so focused so directly and so purely on where the, val where the problem is, where the value proposition is, and to deliver. No matter the environment, no matter what the database is, get to the data. And that's what we do. Casey, thank you for sitting down with me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.